When a man can't sustain an erection, a search for explanations begins. In our culture, most of these explanations tend to be punitive, humiliating and catastrophic for both parties. Do you even love me anymore? Is that why you couldn't get it up? Are you not attracted to me? I've been doing some research, reading some Freud and something happened in your childhood. I don't know, it's your mum's fault, but you're not right. You're really not right. John, have you been taking your vitamins? Hmm? No. We'll go to the chemist and we'll get you some more. I think he must be gay. All the signs are there. The guilty men, for their part, are often hopeless at coming up with any better explanations. You're very attractive and I love you and it just, it doesn't, that's not how it works and just let's, I can't just, you know, it's just been a really tough time at work, you know, with the presentation and, well, what if it's you? Have you thought about that? Have you considered that? That maybe it's you, it's something that you're doing? You're putting me off. <laughs> you know, I, it's not, you know, click your fingers and here we go. It's not a magic wand. It's... <sighs> you don't understand. To help reframe what impotence is and means, we'd be wiser to turn to some figures from the world of culture. For the poet Charles Baudelaire, impotence is an achievement of the intellect. Every man should outgrow the vulgar ability to penetrate a woman with his penis as he gradually learns to penetrate her with his mind. For Marcel Proust, impotence is a symptom of deep politeness. It springs from a solicitude about never wanting to inconvenience a woman with one's presence. It's a mark of kindness and of civilization. For Stardal, men who've been impotent should be celebrated they're going to be self-reflective, modest, able to laugh at themselves, and probably very interesting. The men who've never known sexual fiasco are invariably the dull, brutish, and humorless members of the race. And for Montaigne, the impotent man should be celebrated for being sweetly unsure of himself and touchingly uncertain of his prerogatives. Self-doubt is at the origin of generosity and intelligence. We live in a culture that has, unfortunately, come to see hardness as the ultimate proof of love and can't see virtues in anything else. But one shouldn't only medicalize and stigmatize impotence. We can afford to see it as connected up with some deeply charming and occasionally interesting traits that partners might come to respect and be curious about. As ever, it's the job of culture to reframe our experiences and render us a little less lonely and persecuted.